Hey guys, it's Kenny here from the Fantasy Golf Degenerates Podcast and the FantasyFanatics.com, bringing you my cash game cornerstones for the U.S. Open from Aaron Hills. Uh, before we get into this week, uh, let's recap last week's FedEx St. Jude Classic. It was just an okay week. Uh, all four of my picks made the cut, but one golfer did miss the cut, but uh, made the cut but did not finish. Uh, my picks last week were Francesco Molinari, who finished in 24th place with a score of four under. Uh, Phil Mickelson, who shot 7-under and finished in ninth, Ian Poulter, who finished in 31st at 3-under. And Peter Uline, who made the cut but did not play on Sunday. Not the best week, but not the worst. So let's go ahead and move on to this week. It's the U.S. Open, baby. Super excited about it. Can't wait. One of my favorite tournaments of the year. Uh, the second major of the year. Year in and year out, the U.S. Open produces the most grueling week of golf um, throughout the season. The USGA wants, usually wants to set up the winning score to be as close to even par as possible, so they usually set up the course as difficult as possible. Uh, this week at Aaron Hills, I think it's going to be a bit different. It's the first U.S. Open with four par fives since 1992. That in itself should make scoring easier. But then you throw in the wide, fairway, wide fairways and possible wet conditions, and uh, I think the winning score will be between 8-under and 10-under. I'm just guessing. But that, that is my guess. Uh, there are no trees on the course, so heavy winds could knock that score down a bit, but there doesn't seem to be strong winds in the forecast. That means the main defense of the course will be the tall fescue rough and the bunkers. Uh, the rough might not actually get as much play as people want because these fairways are huge. Uh, golfers will have to miss real wildly off the tee to hit it into this mess. And with the heavy rains on Monday, the USGA has actually cut down the fescue on a couple of holes, which will, again, make the course easier. Uh, the bunkers are going to be where the real trouble is at, especially the greenside bunkers. Uh, the architects of this course have given the name uh, to these greenside bunkers. They've been calling them erosion bunkers. These irregularly shaped bunkers are deep and could be as little as a foot wide at some points. Now, if the golfers hit it in these, um, you know, really narrow areas in these uh, greenside bunkers, they're going to have, to, they're going to struggle to get the ball uh, out of them. Um, if you'd like a more detailed course description, check out my article on the Moosonomics portion of RotoCurve.com. Now, the stats I'm looking for this week are going to be strokes gain approach, strokes gain around the green, par five scoring, and driving distance. Now. With the rain causing soft conditions, I might bump up driving distance a bit, but I wouldn't discount shorter hitters all the way. As long as they play par fives well and are good with their long irons, shorter hitters have a chance. Maybe not for the win, uh, but in DraftKings, you can't have all six winners in your lineup, so I think some of these shorter guys can definitely top 10. Now, on the Fantasy Fanatics cheat sheet, I'll be weighing stats at 50%, recent form at 45%, and U.S. Open history at 5%. So now, let's get on to the picks. Uh, my first pick, and this is actually my pick to win, uh, is going to be Ricky Fowler at $10,500. Uh, Ricky has been having his best season on tour uh, this year. I wouldn't worry too much about his miscut last week. He has shown that he bounces back from poor performances um, very, very well. He has had only three finishes outside the top 16 this year. He missed the cut at the Farmers, and his next time out, he finished fourth at Phoenix. He finished 60th at the Players, then his next time out, he finished second at the Memorial. Uh, he missed the cut last week, and I'm expecting him to bounce back again. Uh, he's great with his irons. He's great around the greens. He's long enough for the course, even if, even if it plays soft and wet. He's an excellent putter, and these greens are pure. Hit it in the right spot on these greens, and the ball's going to go in. It won't be bumpy and untrue like Chambers Bay. Uh, he's ranked first in all-around ranking, which combines driving distance, driving accuracy, green and regulation, sand safe percentage, putting, and birdie or better percentage. He will be my highest owned golfer this week. Next up, it's going to be Adam Scott at $8,800. Now, Adam Scott just seems to do very well consistently at majors. Since 2011, he is number one in rounds in the 60s at majors with 35. 
He is also first in top tens at majors since 2011 with 12. He's second in top fives at majors since 2011 with seven. So basically since 2011, he has top 10 at a major 48% of the time. Think about that number. 12 top 10s and 25 majors played since 2011. It's incredible. Uh, he is currently playing some of the best golf of the year with three top 10s in his last five events played. Just last week, he gained 5.309 strokes on the field off the tee and 6.27 strokes on the field with his approaches. So he's coming into Aaron Hills with his ball striking at a very, very high level. Now everyone knows his weakness is his putter, but he actually gained strokes putting in three of his last four tournaments played. I can see definitely another top 10 or better from Adam Scott this week. Next up is Mr. Consistency himself. Matt Kuchar at $7,600. Uh, he's another golfer who does well at majors uh, throughout this decade, though he never really wins. Uh, at $7,600, you don't need a victory from him. Uh, this decade, Kuchar has 16 top 25s in majors uh, in 28 tries. 16 out of 28 top 25s in majors. That's another insane number. He is coming into Aaron Hills hot with three straight top 12s. His strokes gain approach hasn't been the best for the year total, but in his last three events, he has been crushing it from tee to green. He's gained 15 strokes on the field with his approaches, almost nine strokes on the field off the tee, and over four strokes on the field around the greens in those three tournaments. I also like the fact that two of his recent top fives have come against big boy fields at the Memorial and at the Masters. My final pick, it's going to be Kevin Kisner at $7,500. For a guy that has seven top 11s, including a victory in 12 total events this year, his price seems a bit low, especially when you consider that he has a win and a sixth place finish in his last two events. Now, his lack of length off the tee could make you believe that he might struggle this week, but he is ranked inside the top 50 in all proximity stats from 175 yards and up, and he's ninth in strokes gain approach for the year. He's good around the greens, plays par fives really well, especially for a shorter hitter, makes birdies, is a solid putter. He's had success at the U.S. Open at Chambers Bay, and if you remember, technically, Chambers Bay is a longer golf course than Aaron Hills with only two par fives. All right, so let's recap my cash game cornerstones for the U.S. Open. They're going to be Ricky Fowler at 10500 Adam Scott at 8800 Matt Kuchar at 7600 and Kevin Kisner at $7,500. Uh, this leaves you $15,600 left, so there's plenty of cap space for you to use to fill out the rest of your lineup. All right, guys, make sure you check out all the tools that the FantasyFanatics.com has to offer. Good luck this week. Let's win some money, and I'll see you next week.